it's okay i'm sorry yeah go ahead uh, dick dictates the way we see life in itself uh, most of us are are products of our environment and what we see what we heard we've been around and it's been a a fluctuation of what we have in our own cells and the environment being in but so i had to start off with what's eating you you know when, when you're in the environment of life i actually what what is eating you what what what's going on through your 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 mind when you are living this life of trying to balance things out there are two things and that shall take a, a man's before his time that is what's eating him and that which eats him he eats and it is that which eats him that will take him soonest the things that that you internalize in your environment the things that you have allowed to manifest has constantly been that that dominant factor of what makes your day after going to this the psalms one one they say blessed is the man who walks in the environment walks out in the council walks in the council of the wicked now i left that word out not that's when i should have been corrected but blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord that that's where your joy come in that's where your peace come in that that's where your hope come in when i was doing my doctorate program studying there at andrews university uh dr havoc williams uh she told told us that 70 percent of those who came to andrews university when they leave here they left the church because the environment that they went back in did not subsidize what they had been experiencing there at andrews so sometimes you have to be able to manifest your own if i was you're gonna work out your own salvation that that's when you have to sit down and say lord what will it take for me to stay connected with you i love this little thing says sometimes god allows minor disappointments to avert us from major disasters sometimes the storms of life that you you, you are in is because god had to put it there so he can be able to to matriculate what he wanted to come out of you and sometimes he'd not be able to do that unless you put a storm and sometimes all storms are not there to destroy you some storms come just to clear your path I believe that today. I remember when I was this. This was all over the national news. It took place here in in Pinellas County area, and they were looking for this this man, this hideous man that was described by this young lady. They were looking for this man that that had taken her baby. She had told them that someone stole a baby, and as they looked all around, they finally found the child in the park dead. And she had said that it was a man that snatched the baby out of the car. Come to find out that she had killed her own child. It was disturbing. And, and one day the Lord told me, you need to pray for her. And I said, how can I pray for someone who, who is that, that's reckless? And on the internet, they named her as the worst mother that can ever be. And she had all types of hateful accolades that were put on her. And, and it was hard for me to even pray. And the Lord said, I, I said, Lord, I can't pray for her. And then I was looking through some of my, I have run a nonprofit organization called Feed Our Children, feedourchildren.org. And we always try to help those inner city kids. And I realized when I'm looking at the, one of the pictures, I saw her face. I saw the, the lady, the young girl that, that God has sent in my way long time ago to be nurtured through the different stages of her life. And I said, oh my God, what did I do wrong here? And then I looked at another picture while going through the booklet and I found out that these were, she come from the family that I had baptized right there in a crusade. And the Lord had told me, this is what I wanted you to do because the fact you get so tied up in your stuff that you were looking for 
A, B, and C, but I needed you to do maybe Z and F. And you were working on your own thing and the child needed to be nurtured and she would come to church and used to be the first one at church, always excited about Jesus. So she went from being that person to the most notorious mother that people know to kill her own child. And I had to take my own blame because of the fact that I said, sometimes we get wrapped up in our own environment that we don't allow other people to come in. We have so many excuses about why we can't talk to those young people. When we walked out of church today, did you talk to somebody? Did you, did you walk up to a young person and said, you know, how you doing? You know, sometimes you think those teenagers are so, so out of tune with us, but they're waiting for somebody to step into their, their courtyard. They're waiting for someone to come and say, hey, how you doing? Are you all right? And I wish I had done that. Our environments have to be inclusive, totally inclusive for God to use us. Desire of Ages says in page 384, Satan is planning to take advantage of our, our what? And what? Cultivate what? Traits of what? Character. And to do what? Blind our eyes. To what? Our own necessities and defeat. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm assured that Satan always got something going on. Our hereditary traits that we have in us, he knows the, the, the DNA makeup of us. And if he can just keep us just geared to those things that pleases us and keep our eyes off of Christ, he knows that we will never fulfill those things that God calls us to do in the environment. If life gets too hard to stand, oh, I want to encourage you today to kneel. It says in Psalms 57 verse 1, be merciful, David cried out. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. That's the environment that we must put ourselves in. As the calamities pass by, we should be in God's presence. You're not able to handle some of the divorces and some of the, some of the, the stigmatization, some of the verbal abuse and, and the financial pressure and all those things that, that, that seem to be piling up in your life. I, I found the safest place to be is in the presence of God. What's eating you? Think about that today. More than 800,000 individuals die from suicide every year. One every 40 seconds. For each adult who dies from suicide, there, are, there may be more than 20 others who, are, who have attempted to do the same thing. People are so frustrated with trying to figure out how to handle their own situations. And they have allowed the environment that they're in to dictate their future and still saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't give up here. Suicide is still the single biggest killer of men under the age 45. I love what the churches are doing now. They're doing suicide preventions. It takes that. We never thought we would have that. I'm sending love to everyone who's trying to trying their best to heal from things they can't discuss. Things you can't even talk about. I, I'm embracing you today because the, the hurt and the heaviness that's on you. God said, I'm here to take care of your most vulnerable needs. No matter where you are in your environment, they bring me in and I will come there and I give you that peace that passes all understanding. The wounded mind must be Reset like a fractured bone. It cannot heal itself without spiritual realignment. Mm. Anyone know what spiritual realignment is? It's for those people who you may have met. And I discovered that hurt people hurt people. The beautiful part of this is heal people, heal people. I had to learn when I was pastoring a church down in, in Fort Lauderdale area. Charity Seventh Adventist Church. And I had to learn that sometimes when I was talking to my members, one of the things that was 
was coming out of their mouth, sometimes it was disgusting and a bitterness and dissatisfaction and, and um, discontentment. And I had to realize that when I'm talking to someone who's been hurt, their, their language is, is hurt language. They hurt, they say things about other people that they hurt them and their, their whole environment come contaminated by the words that say, you know, you can speak, words are molecules. You know, you, when, when you speak, things happen into your body. And that's why you have to be careful, but you never should speak when you're hurting. But heal people, oh, I love heal people. Those who, yes, they, they found that niche they can get them through, even though the pressure of life seems to try to be that dominant factor to knock them on their face, but they get back up again. That's the kind of people God wants today. People who will get back up again. Not, 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 not where you are right now, and you're saying this is the end of it, but I don't care how far you go into your, your dark hole, but you can get back up again. That, that's what I want to say to you today. If you never heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. If, if you don't heal from that, that, that's, that childhood hurt, if you don't heal from that, that person who mistreated you, that you, you thought you could trust, if you don't heal from, from, from being neglected and rejected, if you don't heal from those things, if you don't, if you never heal, you go around bleeding on people who never mistreated you. I love that they don't become the person who wrecked you. Hallelujah. Ministry of Healing says in page 492, the very act of looking for evil in others develop evil in those who look. By dwelling upon the faults of others, we are changed in the same image. Mm. When, when you walk into an environment looking for trouble, that trouble that you look for become a reflect, reflection of yourself. You should, you, you should get up in the morning looking for something bright. You should get up in the morning looking for something that, that, that you can speak good about. But when you get up trying to pinpoint this, then you wonder why your children don't really want to talk to you because sometimes if you have a, a negative persona all the time and you don't realize that you've been negative so long until you, you, you don't believe that this is the way to talk. No, look for something that will elevate you. And when you find something that elevates you, you will elevate others. That's the environment I'm talking about this morning. Be, be on alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men and women and be strong. That's what I'm saying today. Death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside of us while we live. You, you, you're walking around with vision and dreams in you that you are allowing to, to just to vanish. And, and I found out that some of the greatest inventions, some of the greatest uh, things that never was made before, some of the most excellent books to, to, had been, that should have been written, they're all there lying in the cemetery because they never did anything with it. Don't let your life just vanish. Do something with that vision. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I had to start learning to do some things myself. I had to learn how to, to, to do some, some things. I said, I would never get on this, this, this computer thing and do all this stuff. But I, I tell you what, COVID taught me that if I didn't, I'll be left out. <laughs> Mind and character and personality says, if, if never required to grapple with difficult problems, it will, after a time, almost lose the power of growth. See, if you're always trying to be in an environment that has no issues, you say, I, I don't want no problems. I don't want to deal with, I don't want to deal with the, the troubles here. I, I don't want to get, no, 
guys that you know when you don't face those giants with with your whole armor on he said and you always trying to find the easy way out see life will give you some some trouble but about the trouble won't last all always weeping may endure for the night have <laughs> a joy comes in the morning there are two things you shouldn't waste your time on things that don't matter and people who don't think you matter that will save you a lot of peace right there. That, that, that'll give you some peace. You can just go to bed, stop worrying about what people think about you. you just, all you need to know what God thinks about you. He loves you just the way you are. Some people say, oh, you're too fat. You're too skinny. You, your hair too nappy. You, you, you don't have this. You, you don't live in the right neighborhood. God said, I just like, I love you the way you are. You don't need to go and try to be superficial to get accepted. Oh, my Lord. So many people are losing sleep overnight because they, they lost track in their environment of what really joy is about. I love Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. God said, I got you. You ain't got to worry about this. I, I made this thing happen. This little boy went to school one morning and his mother was, was out there in the car with him. And, and while they were sitting in the car, before he went in the class, he had this, this uh, Pop-Tart in his hand. And the mother took the Pop-Tart and she was hungry too. And he had already ate one and she ate it. And he looked at his mother and said, why you ate my Pop-Tart? She said, because I was hungry. And then he looked at her with that face. He was so angry. He said, I'm never going to smile again. He said, I'm never going to smile again. And that was picture day. And his pictures came out looking like this because he was so mad. I want to ask you, who's watching today? Did somebody eat your Pop-Tart? You going around with an attitude? Has your environment become so saturated with with disgustus, disgustedness that you, you have lost all your joy? Have your environment become so, so contaminated with, with what other people have, you have allowed other people to filter into your joy and they're snatched out all your peace? Oh, my brothers and sisters, I don't know what's going on today, but I want you to put it in God's hands. Whatever it is, what's that, remember what's eating you. Be, but, I will restore you to health. This is important. And heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later. Unpleasant ways. Let go and let God. All those things that are hidden in your environment that you, you feel that has, has gotten so that you, you have not been able to express those things. After my son died, I had to go into a place where I had to learn how to cry. I had to learn that it was okay. It, it was okay for men to cry. That was the only thing that gave me relief. And God said, one day, all these tears that I'm, I'm spreading now, he said, I'll wipe away all those tears. I like this. Don't let people pull you into their storm. Pull them into your peace. Yes, you will come across people who really don't want to have any joy. Don't, don't hang around those people. They're not ready for what God's about to do for you. Take this verse with you, 2 Corinthians 4. It says, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not dis in despair. We, we fix our eyes not on what is seen but was unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal god said i got a bigger plans for you brothers and sisters i got bigger plans for you if you allow people to make withdrawals more withdrawals than deposit in your life you will soon be in the negative know when to close your account know when to say there's a word in the in the alphabet that has two letters, N-O, 
You have to learn how to use those words every now and then. You have peace in your environment. When you are finally learn that a person's behavior has more to do with their own eternal struggle than it ever did with you, you learn grace. Trying to fix everybody is not your job. You can't, sometimes your own children, all you, you, you can do some stages is just pray for them. So Lord, I stretch my hands to do. This is one of my favorite texts. It says, who is he that says, and it comes to pass when God has not commanded it. A lot of things that you have allowed to creep into your, your life and determine your joy has come from other people's opinion. They said, you'll never make it. You can never have that house. You can never get that loan. You can never get that degree. You couldn't open that new business. He said, who's speaking into your life? If God hadn't commanded it. I'll tell you what, I don't care how, how big it is. God said, I can take care of it, whatever it is. They bear it. <laughs> they tried to bury me, but they didn't know I was a seed. I always grow back stronger. Some of you may have been pushed down into the eternity of, of being unable to touch anymore. And the devil didn't want to have no feelings in you. And he let you know that you were just absolute. And God said, I'm going to resurrect you today. They may have lied on you and cheated on you and tried to bury all the joy. But God said, I'm going to resurrect you today. You're a seed. You're, you're like a mustard seed. You can move that mountain. Come on, children. You can move that mountain if you just believe. It's at the cross where I first saw the light. If you don't get nothing else out of this, John 11, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. There's life in Jesus. If your environment has been become so dull and bland that you have no joy, no peace, no satisfaction, he said, I want to give you life for I am the resurrection and the life. You will find a rejuvenation in him. Thank you, Jesus. You are never too lost to be saved wherever you are today. I'm looking for that great getting up morning, brothers and sisters. When your environment brings you to the cross, when your environment brings you to your knees, when your environment gives you that peace that passes all understanding, oh, you know that you are getting prepared for the environment where we will spend eternity in the presence of the one who's able to keep us from falling. There will be a day. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in, children. I want to be in that number when he calls, calls my son, my mother, from the grave. Come on up a little higher, children. Come on up. I don't know what's eating you, but God said, whatever it is, I will set you free. May I pray for you? Father in heaven, I thank you for those who are on the line. I don't know what's eating them. Could be their finances. Could be their relationship. They could have situations where there's been a, a mute from their children, not speaking no more. Lord, they may have a disease that the doctor has pronounced on them. God, I don't know what's eating them, but Lord, may they bring it to the table. You said if you are allowed to come in, you will set them free. So I pray, oh God, on this program today, that you will saturate the listeners, Lord, with a new boldness. And they will be able to know, Lord, that you are able to do abundantly above all they can ask or they can ever imagine. We give you the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children said, amen and amen. Amen, amen. That was powerful. That was 
revealing, it was renewing. Thank you so much, Chaplain Moses Brown, for that presentation. I, you know, I was touched, I was blessed. My goodness. Um, in when you were talking, um, one of Ellen G. White quote came back to me from Message to Young People. And it says that man can shape circumstances but circumstances should not be allowed to shape the man. We should seize Amen. upon circumstances to make it an instrument so that it can build us and help us to grow and get closer to Christ. So do not let our environment control us, but we need to control our environment. By the things that we watch, the things that we put into our minds, eh? you know, people we associate with and all of that. It is so, so true that we need to be careful. Um, what is eaten, I like what you said, what is, you know, we have to look at what is eaten, um, what is eating us and what we are eating. Those two things can have an effect on us. At this time, I'll open up for any questions. Anyone have any questions for Chaplain, Chaplain Brown? I'd just like to make a comment. Oh, comment. That's fine. Yeah. I, I like something he said about the generation. In that I had to learn in my life, I, I was concerned about my relationship with my son. And I, we seemed to be distant. But then when I looked at it, he's doing the same thing that I used to do when I was his age. You know, be consumed in trying to get ahead and working and stuff. So... I finally had to, to realize that if I give him to God mm. and let God work on him, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry. Yes. Because because he, he's going to do what he's going to do. And I can't do about that. But I'm not going to lose my health or my saneness because of him. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's true. That's true. Yep. Thank you for sharing that, Larry. Um, you know, I this week I was um, approached by someone. Um, you know, they left their job because of the environment. Um, she was saying, she told me that the environment that she was working in did not um, meet up to her, her standards or it was a, against her moral standards. So she left. So now she's seeking, you know, in, employment elsewhere. And one of the um, the interview asked her why she left the job. So she explained that the environment did not meet up to her you know, her morals. So she's all concerned about that. That you know, that's maybe something negative, and they might look at her as not being, you know, a good person. Or why did you stay that long if you know the morals didn't uh, meet up? You know, how, how can you counsel someone like that? What can you tell someone? And so she feels very bad about herself right now. So how can we go, um, what words can I help her? How can I get along so she can see that, you know, what she did was fine and um, she just need to move on? Well, I would definitely, um, I think you're doing the right thing already. Just, uh, just giving her assurance that as she go through this little metamorphosis that she can always depend on on you as a friend and she can always depend on christ mm -hmm. as one who will see her through yeah. and that that text that says i will never leave you never forsake you and when you stand when you stand up for christ he'll stand up for you so if if her motive and the reason for, for switching is because she wants to live a better Christian life and want to be a, an example for Christ. God will honor that. And so you can just give her sure that when she's doing the right thing for the right reason, God always have the right answer for her. Thank you. Thank you. When one you door know, closes, he opens another. Yeah. You know, anyone? And I and yeah. think about that too. Sometimes we think that it's us that's moving ourselves from these situations, and and it's also it's actually God, mm -hmm. because He 
sees the changes that we're going through. He sees how, how it's affecting us. So he will take and, and move us from that situation, give us time to heal, and then put us on that right path to where we need to be versus us trying to force ourselves to fit in somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, that's encouraging. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, the, the, the topic, you know, what's eating you is, you know, such a, a powerful topic. And, and, and Chaplain Brown brought us such important um, nuggets and words of encouragement. So take these words to heart, go back, you know, we are going to have this available, the um, program that we, we, I'm taping it right now. So you can go back and listen to this again, because this is worth listening to again. You know, our environment is so very important because we can, it can heal us or it can hurt us. So mm -hmm. surround yourself as, as Taplin Brown said, with positive individuals, people who are going, who, who are looking for that same goal that you have or similar goals in life so that you can stay positive and be encouraged and do not, let, do not be enslaved by your environment, but be, you know, uh, be proactive, be someone who can help others to also enjoy and be blessed by their environment or to get out of situations that they need to get out of so that they can live, <clears throat> a, you know, live a life Christ wants us. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to be positive individuals. He wants mm -hmm. us to go about life with a smile. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what our circumstances might be, you know, we need to believe and trust that God is with us and he's leading us and he is, and he has a plan for our lives. You know, mm -hmm. be positive. Wake up in the morning with a positive attitude and that mm -hmm. will take you very far throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So, Chaplain Brown, do you have a closing thoughts or anything you want to say before we end? Well, I'm glad that uh, Dr. Senke has continued this ministry of outreach. And I'm hoping that as we, we grow together, we will never forget that we have a Savior who loves us with such intensity. And I always like, when I'm doing my programs, I, I tell people that God is not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you.